Sometimes surveyors will mention a lack of lateral restraint. What is lateral restraint? Well, what it basically means is that one or more walls are encouraged to move sideways, and usually that's by wind loading. Uh, contrary to popular belief, the worst type of wind loading isn't the wind blowing to your house, it's blowing past it. And what that does, that acceleration reduces air pressure and that negative pull. It's very gentle over a small area, but over a big area, especially a big gable wall, it can be quite a pull. And it's happening whenever the wind's buffeting and that gentle, gentle pulling and on and off, on and off, on and off can eventually make a wall move a little bit. And it might move a millimeter or two every few years. But once that happens, it doesn't move back. So over time, a small problem can eventually lead to quite a big bulge. And often a surveyor will come along and look at that and say, oh, we need some lateral restraint. So what I've done is I've got some bits and bobs out for you. We're gonna look at some of the methods we use to provide rigorous, robust lateral restraint, all right? Now, if you were to go into a brand new house with a big gable wall, go in the loft, what you might see is something like this screwed to the underside of the rafters or maybe across the ceiling joists on timber binders and these are called straps and sometimes you'll find um, strapping might be mentioned in the surveyor's report and this is a traditional way of retrofitting lateral restraint. The reason it's there in a new house is because the building regulations insist on it. This end will be fixed into the wall and this end will go into the roof structure, perhaps into the floor structure. In effect, the wall can't move. Doesn't have to be particularly strong, as you can see, it's not exactly a massive piece of steel, but it's stopping those little cyclical movements that happen now and again. And so the wall just stays where it is, as it should. If it's already moved, we might have to go a step further and use something a bit stronger than this though. So from a remedial point of view, we can start at the easy bit, and the easy way of dealing with it is probably just put some straps in. It's important to put them in properly. In fact, a lot of our lateral restraint work is on fairly new houses where these haven't been put in properly or have been missed. So what we'll do is we'll come along and we'll fix these to the rafters, to the ceiling joists, maybe on the side of purlins, some of the timbers in the roof, and then secure them to the wall. Now, unfortunately, that's where the problem arises because it's no good plugging and screwing this bit to the wall because you wouldn't want to rely on a single screw or a plug. They can pull out, they can work loose, this kind of thing. So usually what we'll do in those cases is use a resin bonded stud, something like this installed in the wall and then the end will come through there and we'll simply put a nut on it. We'll resin bond that in. If the wall is hollow, if it's got uh, defects in it, we'll use something like a resin sleeve to give us a good fix. And in effect, the bolt holds that firmly. And we can test that with a rig to make sure that it's holding firmly before we leave site, and that's what we do. That's the common way of dealing with it. Now, unfortunately, with existing houses, sometimes we need to do, go a step further and you can't get access to the areas concerned. And what you'll do then, if you want to fasten the floors to the gable, we may go outside, drill a hole all the way through and install something like this. This is a Helifix Bowtie HD, heavy duty basically. It's got a very strong thread on it, you can see it's, it's quite coarse and it will self tap and screw into the floor joists all the way in, it's quite tight, you need a, a fairly chunky drill to get that in and then once it's in we can resin bond the outer into the outer leaf and again we've mobilised the diaphragm of the floor to give it some strength. do not have to be hundreds of tons or anything, we're looking at a couple of kilonewtons and that's enough because we cut quite a few of these in so that they're not creating a point load on the wall. And we can get these up to 1.5 metres long, uh, so they can go through a number of floor joists. You'd be surprised that we can even use something as small as that to improve lateral restraint. If the joists, the floor beams, etc., and the purlins are bearing into the wall, we can find that very precisely and simply screw that into the timber and then resin bond it in the outer leaf. The good thing about that as well is we can tension test it before we do the resin work. We know it's working. Not all walls are in good condition. In fact, we tend to get called in when the wall's already moved. Now, if it's stone, um, if it's a weak block work, if it's some kind of friable material, uh, very soft line bed joints, we may, may need to use something a little bit more advanced. And this is where sock anchors come in very useful because we can get sock anchors from Syntec and Helifix where the sock doesn't come the full length of the anchor and we've got a little bit of naked stud there sticking out. So you can imagine if we've got a very soft 
substrate, a weak and friable stone wall for instance, we can install this in a large diameter pilot hole, we can inflate it and then we can attach that to a strap or to an angle steel or to a trimming joist and it's very very flexible. It gives us a lot of opportunities to improve strength in a building and save it, save some rebuilding basically. These go all the way up by the way to something as chunky as this. This is a 22 millimeter diameter Syntec anchor um, this is a mucky one because it's left over from a job where they're actually holding up part of a bridge. That's how strong they are. The flexibility goes a long way. For instance, this is another Syntec we've put in to hold. We've put about 150 of these in a, a facade in York. They're installed so that the original facade, which has been left up, is in place. The new building going along to it will be fastened to it. And we we'll basically just put these adapters on there and then you can screw anything you like into the end and in this case we've got some bars bent like this and they meet up into the reinforced concrete so that the new building is firmly bonded to the old and the old building with its flues and its various gaps and crevices is secured right through its thickness and that could be as long as you like. Don't always have to be complicated something as simple as a sieve like this will give us a fix with resin so if we have got a building with a relatively solid wall, we can get two or three kilonewtons on something like that. Not a problem at all. So you can rely on Bricktie to specify exactly what you need in every case. And often we'll use a hybrid solution because we've been in the business over 30 years. We've got great relationships with all of the manufacturers of these anchors. They all know us, they trust us. We have great working relationships with them. And as a result, we'll often come along and say, well, this product is better for this part of the building, that one for the other part of the building, and that's the way it works. Because at the end of the day, it's the building that matters, the job needs to be right.